I'm here with Kate, um, Kate Langbrook. We're in Melbourne, Australia, and we've just had an existential, a grounded chat about life, about entertainment, about what Kate does for work. And uh, I thought I'd just share some of it, and I'll pass it on to Kate to introduce what she does, and then we'll just unpack a little bit of her story. So, Kate, do you want to tell everybody what you do? Uh, I work in radio and television. At the moment, I co-host a national drive show. Um, so it's from four till six in the afternoons yep. when people are trapped in cars. <laughs> so fossil fuels, good for us. <laughs> and um, and I do occasional TV things and I write as well. Yeah, cool, cool. And I have four children. Yeah, so she does it all, clearly. Um, I do do it all. What, what's your thoughts on... So that, that'll be interesting to unpack, right? What's your thoughts on working through that and balancing that? Because we touched on this idea of work-life integration versus yes, work-life yes, balance. Yes, yes, yes. And my my theory is that I'm sure I'm not alone in, but that um, that people talk about work life balance, but I think the separation of those two mm. inherent in that very definition yeah. defeats itself. Yeah, yeah. So I think that it's there is right? yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that you have to not see them as separate. Yeah. And. You know how people go, oh, I don't live to work, I work to live, or well, the other way around, I can't remember how it goes. But yeah. you actually, as human beings, there's never been a time where you can work, you can not work and live. Yeah, like we've, yeah you, it's very true. Yeah, you can't. It's it's not. So there's something in us that that needs to work. Yeah. And w- whatever form that takes, you know, the farmer, the caveman, the la-la. Mm. Um, the radio show. The radio show. <laughs> yeah. The vlogger <laughs> the vlogger um, and so I think that when you make those distinctions you're actually stopping the very thing from happening that you want to happen so yeah. I for instance a couple of years ago in our um, office remember saying to the people that I work with we were talking about a party organising a party and someone was talking about work friends and we mm. were like yeah some w- invite some work friends and then I went actually you know what I don't believe in the concept of work friends yeah There's only friends. You're either friends or you're not friends. But we do do this delineation all the time and and I don't think it helps. I think it means it sets you up to never be able to achieve what you want to achieve. Yeah, and it's hard to be self-expressive when you have two different identities, right? Like when you have to be like your work self or your your home self. Yes, yes, that's right. right. And then you have to compartmentalise. Yeah. And so then you're like, and then what happens when you bump into (laughs) someone you're in your... like, wait, who was I Yeah, I'm in my private life, but I bumped into someone from work. Oh, (laughs) Just give me a second, I need it. Yeah, like there's so many costumes to carry around with you that the more you can divest yourself of them and just be as close to your essential self all the time... Except in the bedroom, <laughs> um, then I think that's I think that's part of the key to happiness. Yeah, as you can see, Kate is is grounded, but also wonderfully introspective. So, like, that's an amazing insight. I don't get much time to be introspective. I make time for myself, right? Do you I have think it. Most people think about. I don't know. That's that's the thing because yeah. I'm in my head a lot, and I yeah, make like right. a date with myself, and I'll be like, okay, it's, oh, t- it's time to reflect. It's time right. to reflect. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's what's on social media. What's on like? Yeah. I don't know. I, yes. Yes. I think uh, it's it's time well spent. Oh, for sure. It's time well spent. Because also, um, James is the first person who loves my theories. I love about, these theories. He Ooh, loves yeah. it. Talk about the, what we were just talking about. That was really good. My theory of happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't, is it? But I anyway. thought it was good. Well, I appreciate it. I also think that 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 within everyone is their essential self mm-hmm. which i think is the i don't know would oprah call it your higher power your higher power <laughs> but you know like the you essence, get a car yeah you get it. everyone gets a car but it's like the part Sorry, of oprah, yourself if you're watching this <laughs> oh she'd love this oh she loves oh this. my god you should talk to her oprah will be next we'll, we'll get oprah just, on, right? anyway <laughs> she knows so much about this stuff yeah anyway um I think that that I- the essential self is is like the core of what makes you you and no one yeah. else. And I think that there's a thousand ways to subvert or misalign or misdirect mm. or neglect your essential self and some of it is imposed on you like people who have terrible upbringings or whatever. That aside, mm. 
no one generally does worse things to themselves than we do to ourselves. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. So I think that in life you need to serve and always keep at your core that you are the servant of your essential self and that it's up to you then to divest yourself of the things that aren't helping. Yeah. So behaviours or people or or the way you eat or not exercising or whatever and get rid of that baggage that's stopping you from reaching your the only goal that I think a human being has on this earth is happiness. Yeah. That's the ultimate goal because it encompasses everything. Yeah. It encompasses service and friendship and laughter, and love, everything. like everything. So I think that's the ultimate measure of your success as a human being is how happy you are. I love that. Mm. I love that. Okay, with that in mind, mm. if you could go back to when you first started your journey, whether it was in radio, whether it was in entertainment, just wow. in general, knowing everything you know now, it could be about the business, but it also could be largely what we're talking about now in terms of like how you can be happy, how you divest yourself of the things yes, that, yes. that don't quite bring you that happiness. Yeah. What would you tell yourself? Slash, if you would pass, you would listen to you. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's true. Imagine that if you meet up with your and they're like, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thanks, Sorry, Kate. I'm <laughs> fine. Uh, my God, who is she? Um, I think I would say, um, work on your friendships, like maintain your friendships, yeah. and in times when your career might really start to kick off or whatever and work whatever form that takes um or adventuring people who travel all the time yeah. think you've you've got to maintain um your friendships yeah mm. that's great that's mm. great okay if anybody wants to check out hopefully more of this sort of thinking because i love this but if anybody wants to check out what you do um anything you want to point them to yes Husey and kate show yeah on Instagram, anything? yes, yeah? and on cool. Twitter. Oh, me on Twitter, Kate. I'm um, and on Insta, Kate Langbrook, L A N G B R O E K. Awesome. Dutch. It's uh. Thanks, James. I've had so much fun. Thank you. Yeah, so much. me too. Awesome guys. That's oh, we Kate went Langbrook. Deep. We went deep. And it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs>